we talk about uh, the topic for today in chapter 19, I want to go back to chapter four with you quickly. And I want to point one thing out about the biomes that you're going to see at the end of the chapter. Okay. So chapter four ends with a description of these major biomes found on planet Earth. And you will be required for the AP test to know those biomes and then also um, know something about uh, this thing called a climograph. And so I want to take a moment now and describe a climograph to you and show you how a climograph can be used to um, identify these biomes. And so this picture here is a picture from last week. And if you remember, we said that last week, um, the Earth's overall wind patterns are influenced by these convection cells. So in some places on planet Earth, we have areas that we find consistent rising air. And if we start at the equator, that's related to this IT CZ, intertropical conversion zone, or the point where the sun is most directly overhead on any given day. And we said that migrates between 23 and a half degrees north latitude and 23 and a half degrees south latitude. That line does. And so wherever that line is, the sun is most directly overhead and we tend to find rising air. Where we have air that is rising and cooling, we have condensation and we have this predictable pattern of precipitation. So what we find is that where we have rising air in our planet, we have quite a bit of rainfall. Eventually that air cools, it moves horizontally and it falls. As it's falling, we tend to have air that is warm and dry. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to take these large scale cells where air tends to be rising around the equator and up here um, in the subpolar or the temperate areas, we tend to find precipitation on a consistent basis and where we find air that is falling, the subtropics and near the poles, we tend to have dry air, okay? And we're gonna take that pattern and we're going to associate it with these biomes that we see at the end of um, the chapter. Now, I wanna throw this out there um, because uh, you do have to be able to identify the nine terrestrial biomes and describe them, but you also have to be able to interpret these climate diagrams. And so what we're looking at when we talk about a biome is a place on the planet, a geographical region that has a particular combination of temperature and moisture, which influences the overall habitat. So when we look at this pattern, we know the rainfalls around the equator, that's the tropics, that's where we tend to see lots of rainfall. And then we mentioned to the north and south of that area where the air tends to fall consistently, we find these yellow areas, which are defined as the major deserts on the planet. And they tend to be associated with a particular latitude. And then we have another pattern where we have rainfall again. And then we have a pattern where we have these dry areas. And we can describe that using one of these things. And so I want to look at this for just a minute. And you should be able to read and interpret these and apply these to the various biomes. So when we look at this diagram, on the X axis, we have the months of the year. So J stands for January. In the middle, we have June and July. And then on the other end, we have December. Okay. And on the Y axis, we actually have two Y axes de uh, described here. We have average temperature, which is in red. And we have average precipitation, which is in blue. Okay. And so if we start to plot temperature and precipitation through the year, we should be able to associate the given biome with these temperature and precipitation lines. So if you think about the uh, anything that is found in the tropics, 
Anything that is found in the tropics is going to have a consistent temperature throughout the year. So when we look at the tropics um, from January all the way through June, July and over to December, the temperature fluctuation is pretty low. You're not going to have a lot of temperature fluctuation. And so when we see a graph like this and the temperature line in red is more or less high and straight across, then we know we're dealing with a biome that occurs somewhere in the tropics. If we see a temperature line that has a wide variation from winter toward northern hemisphere summer, then we know that we're in an area that is away from the equator or getting into the higher latitudes. The bigger this temperature fluctuation, the closer it is to the poles. The North Pole, of course, um, during our winter receives little to no solar radiation, very little. It's dark the whole or good chunks of the winter. Um, so temperature gets really low. And then in the summertime, it receives the all of its yearly budget of solar radiation. And so the temperature tends to be higher and the difference is quite extensive. So that's what we're going to use to identify the position of the biome, okay? Now precipitation can be a little trickier. If it's, um, if it's precipitation and it's low, like near zero and it's straight across the whole year, then you know it's going to be in one of those areas where the air is falling and the deserts tend to be located. So subtropics or toward the poles. If precipitation um, is high and there's a little fluctuation, but not much, then you're going to be dealing with a biome that is found in the tropics. If you have a wide seasonal variation in precipitation, then that's one that's probably found more in the temperate zone. So if you start to examine um, these biomes at the end of chapter four, uh, you should also then be prepared to describe the corresponding climograph. Here's an example. The tundra is located at high latitudes. You can see the moisture at high latitude is very low. Tundras receive little precipitation, even though they can be snow covered. Um, that snow cover can last throughout an entire warm season. And so the snow cover does not necessarily melt every year. And that can be deceiving um, because uh, you see lots of snow and you think there's lots of precipitation. But in fact, tundra regions tend to be pretty dry. You can also see the temperatures fluctuate quite dramatically. So during the winter months, the temperatures are very cold. And then in the summer, you have a peak and then it goes back down in December. Um, if we examine one of these for a tropical region, uh, you can see temperature. Temperature is high. And like I said, the temperature is consistently high. So it might get a little bit higher during the summer months, depending on latitude, but the temperature line is almost straight across. It's always warm in the tropics. And in this particular location in the Philippines, you do have some variation in precipitation, but the, the variation goes from high to a little bit lower to really high, okay? So it's important to be able to relate these graphs to, um, to the actual biome in question. So I would highly recommend paying attention to those as you, as you read the end of chapter uh, four. You will definitely see those 